in the heart of West Yorkshire, nestled among rolling hills and steep valleys, lies a trail steeped in history and folklore, a path once traversed by merchants and travellers of old, a lifeline between towns, connecting Halifax to Huddersfield. This is the Pacos route, 10 miles of rugged terrain, winding through time-worn villages and forgotten byways. A trail forged long before the days of cars or railways, when a sturdy horse and strong legs were the only means of travel. Today, we embark on that very journey, starting from the historic Shibden Hall, home of the infamous Anne Lister, and heading south to Fixby Hall, a hidden gem on the outskirts of Huddersfield. 10 miles may not sound like much, but with Yorkshire's unpredictable weather and its undulating landscape, this walk will test your resolve. It's a route shaped by history, but it's also a journey through the heart of the county, pastures, moorland, and the echo of hooves long gone. Hello and welcome to my channel. Hope you're all feeling strong and well. Now, today we are embarking on a 10 mile hike, a special 10 mile hike, starting at uh, Shibden Hall here in Halifax. Uh, of course, the home of the, uh, of the infamous uh, Anne Lister, as you heard in my dramatic intro to this, uh, to this vlog. <laughs> That's voiceover Rob. So yeah, uh, it's a special 10 mile hike. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm a bit bleary eyed this morning, I'll tell you. The cold just getting to my eyes, but what a beautiful morning it is. Look at, uh, look at Shibden Hall in the early morning sun. Uh, yeah, so it's a lovely morning. So let's get started. On this vlog, we are going to be uh, traveling and exploring an old pack horse route that will take us into the countryside over the moors heading towards um, Huddersfield and we'll end up at uh, Fixby Hall and uh, we'll have a look at that when we get there so let's get on with this yeah so uh, Shibden Hall looking great in the sunshine uh, built in about the 15th uh, 15th century I think uh, I think it was built. I think it's uh, medieval, goes back to medieval time, Shibden Hall. Uh, looking really good, more than can be said for myself. Feeling a little bit, like I say, bleary eyed this morning. I'm sure that will pass. It's very early in the morning and lovely to see the sun coming up. But before we get lost in the history of Shibden Hall and Gentleman Jack, our path follows, our path this morning follows an old pack horse route which was uh, used for essential trading between, uh, between the towns and the cities. So the footway is closed, the footpath is closed. First hurdle. Seems to be some work going on. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming they've left that gate open for me to walk all the way around. That's what I'm gonna do. I think I could actually take the path, but I'll try and do the right thing. This is quite a steep part of the, of the trail coming up out of Shibden and it looks like they're diverting the flow of water that comes down the pack horse route so that it doesn't uh, continue down there and uh, comes through and under this field. So that's got to be good. But it's not good for me today because I've got to go all the way around.
and that's as close as I get to this fella. Do you know what? I haven't even had anything to drink. Just realized this morning I got straight off to here and haven't had any breakfast. So I'm looking forward to getting sat down. I have brought a flask, gonna have a cup of coffee. And I've only brought some fruit and uh, a few uh, a few little uh, trekking bars, but looking forward to them. There is a cafe somewhere along the way, at a place called uh, mm, Cromwell Bottom. Cromwell Bottom, I think there's a cafe in it, it might be open. now. I've come across my nemesis here. I've got to cross diagonally across this field and all the cows with a couple of youngsters by the look of it, little bullocks. And that's exactly what I thought when I saw them all in this field. Bullocks. I'm gonna walk around. Bye. Successfully navigated the bullocks. <laughs> Don't get me started on the dangers of cows with youngsters. Wow, what a day. It just keeps getting better. The sun is blinding. I could have brought the sunglasses. I think I'll be losing the jacket very soon. It's quite warm as I'm hiking. Beautiful. Now, pack horse routes like this one were mainly used in the late 17th and 18th century. And the traders would lead their sturdy horses along here, all loaded up with coal, wool, salt, and uh, they would trade between the towns. And these routes would often uh, run alongside remote countryside like this. And the reason for that is they were avoiding the valleys where the paths would become flooded. So I found a nice little spot here to have a coffee at last. I am heading towards a place called Cromwell Bottom down, down this route here. Um, and there is a cafe there. I might, I might have a, a little look at that as well, but I am dying for a coffee. Cheers. It's not like me to be so organised, bringing coffee with me. It's usually uh, Sheila that does that, but uh, I am organised today. Mm. I needed that. What else have I brought? Cox's apple. Mm. So it's a real junction here. Um, so I can imagine over hundreds of years, people sitting right here doing exactly what I'm doing, having a drink, something to eat, and then continuing the journey. So back to it, back on the pack horse route. Not a lot's changed here. 
I like the way the trees are arching over, watching everything. It's as though time stood still here. Anyway, back onto the route. Look at the views. The Yorkshire landscape has never looked so good. But in the winter, rain and snow, it'd be pretty rough. Imagine the traders back in the day. They say that they had to be pretty tough to navigate this uh, pack horse route. So at this point of the walk, there is two ways to go. I can go down this way, but it looks like they've let it overgrow, which is a shame. Uh, needs all cutting back that because it is actually a public right away but i'm going to go this way because i can see that it's a little bit easier and i think this would be the pack horse route anyway it's quite steep and narrow in places here and legend has it that on this route there was a trader who had a horse that whenever it got to a really steep part it was so stubborn and heavily laden with goods that he just wouldn't move. He could not get it to move. No matter what he did, he could not get this stubborn horse to move. And then out of the, out of the woodland in the darkness, this uh, dark figure appeared and offered him help in getting the horse to move in exchange for a mysterious favor. And the trader, so desperate to get this horse moving, accepted. And then the horse immediately started moving and the figure disappeared into the woodland and at that point the trader realized he'd made a deal with the devil himself and on dark misty nights in these woods people still say they see a dark figure moving about so uh let's hope that we finish this hike before uh, before sunset <laughs> Okay, so we've come right down the valley now and uh, we've got to the bottom and it's called Cromwell Bottom, you might know it. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the first time since we started at um, Shibden Hall, it's the first time we've met a major road. So that's a great route that we've traveled all that way through the woods, over the tops, through the fields. And this is the first major road. I'm just going to nip across there into Cromwell Bottom. There's a bit of a nature reserve it is. Uh, there's a little bit of a bird spotting area as well. And I do believe there's a cafe. I've just passed the cafe and it's closed. I have got a little bit of coffee left in my flask. So I'm going to uh, sit down and have that very soon. But Cromwell Bottom, lovely place to walk around. Nature Reserve, as I said. And uh, you just saw me crossing the bridge there over the canal and we've got the river here as well. And that bridge will have been vital for the, for the traders because at certain times of year, of course, the river would flood and the paths would become impassable. So the bridge would have been vital and uh, so vital that uh, local landowners often commissioned the building of the bridges. So this is a really crazy part, dodgy part of the, of the route. You can cross straight across the, the railway line. You can walk straight across that railway line there. That's crazy. You don't see many of these about for obvious reasons. 
So I'm safely across the railway line <laughs> and just navigating this quarry. There's a quarry behind this fence here, another dodgy spot. But yeah, you don't see that much being able to just cross like that. And of course, the railway and the canal would not have been there on the original uh, pack horse route back in the uh, 17th and 18th century. So I've just come up the other side of the valley. Over there is Halifax, where we've walked from Shibden Park. I'm heading on up now towards Huddersfield. Quite a hike up the other side. And uh, we're heading towards Fixby Hall. I've picked a fantastic day. This would have been a whole different ball game had it been raining, of course. Fantastic views. Whew. Well, I suppose it had to happen. The pack horse route was interrupted by the ugly M62. You just saw us, we crossed that there and, uh, and then across the bypass. And now we've rejoined the lovely route and we're gonna go up here into this field and we're headed towards um, Fixby Hall, of course. Ah, this is better. The noise of the traffic drifting away. All that said, I'm still glad that you can uh, just skip over the motorway like that and then over the bypass and rejoin straight away onto the uh, public right of way, which is across this field. And it's so good that uh, that access is still there. Can you imagine having to walk down the bypass to try and find some other way back onto it if we ever lost this? This little path here. So we've reached our final destination. Lovely bench here. <laughs> Just nice to have a rest and my final cup of coffee. Uh, Fixby Hall behind me there. And uh, Fixby Hall built in about the 17th century, uh, a total um, architectural contrast to uh, Shibden Hall, which we, we left uh, hours ago. Uh, Shibden Hall is, is a bit of a medieval marvel. And uh, this is reflecting uh, more of a Georgian uh, character, uh, this building. Um, but it, it's, been, uh, it's been the residence of, of, of quite a few um, prominent families uh, from Huddersfield and the surrounding areas, including the Thornhills. So it was once part of a massive estate and it's uh, still testament to the wealth of these families back in the day. It's actually rumored that there's some tunnels leading to the other estates from Fixby Hall, but no one's ever found them. <laughs> Do you just make this stuff up, Rob? <laughs> no, that's what they say. There's some tunnels that lead off to other estates. <laughs> and of course it is a golf course now and a wonderful one. People are enjoying it today. The weather is great, just perfect for golf. And uh, we've done the 10 miles and that 10 miles has given us the chance to walk in the footsteps of the horses, the pack horses, the traders, and uh, just experience and feel a little bit of that history. And the paths that we have traveled today on this 10 mile hike from Shibden Hall to Fixby Hall have experienced a hell of a lot of Yorkshire life. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you have, consider subscribing. I upload vlogs about once a month. Um, I don't know where I'll be next time, but what I do know is I want you with me. So until the next one, bye.